Uh, good morning. Thank you for inviting me to this special event. And it, uh, it is a great honor to have uh, this opportunity to speak all of you. Uh, I'm, let me get started. This is our contents today presentation. Uh, before we start with the, the outlook on the demand, I would like to the recap on the copper market in 2018. So uh, last year, copper mined up for 2.3%. Uh, year on year on the low base as uh, several destruction were in seen in 2017 uh, and then also export to destruction in Indonesia. However, refined copper rose only by 1.5% affected by adversely by 1% decline in secondary production versus 2 point growth in the primary production. Um, China production growth uh, has decelerated to the 1.6% uh, due to the stricter restriction of copper scrap imports. Uh, and then um, also the India suffered the production losses about 35% decline from the shutdown of its 400,000 tons uh, to to recording uh, smelter closure. Uh, so however, the meanwhile consumption is also post posted a decent growth of 2% backed by mainly strong 5% growth in China. Uh, however, the copper prices has been retreated since June and they continue to the decline towards the to end of the 2018 uh, due to the weak sentiment arising from U.S.-China trade tension and then the concerns on the slow global economies. Uh, so before we start the uh, demand outlook, I want to take a look at the relationship between macro variables and the copper prices. Uh, copper prices are strongly correlated with the global economy of course, and generally seen with the business cycle as seen uh, the OECD uh, leading indicators. Copper price as well as uh, for other um, LME metals also generally move with the interest rates uh, when you know, higher rates implies an improving economic condition. And then the appreciation US dollar is likely to have a negative impact on copper prices. Uh, meanwhile, the copper price also affected uh, by factors beyond fundamentals. Copper is uh, one of the most traded commodities around the world. So copper price has uh, affected various economic indicators, use flows, and then money flows too. Uh, so let's start with the copper outlooks. Copper demand uh, is a link to the uh, society and the proxy for the economic conditions. Um, the, the today copper and the, its alloys are used to produce a range of products necessary to the modern life from cars to electronics. Uh, accordingly, copper demand has grown in line with the global economic growth. Copper displayed a distant positive correlation with the global defined copper demand growth and then GDP uh, growth in last 55 years. Uh, in the historical research of copper consumption, we acknowledge the peak of copper consumption per capita has been emerged twice, unlike other metals. This is very interesting in this research result. Uh, so in US and Japan, copper consumption reached its first peak at uh, 11 kilograms per capita when GDP per capita was around 20 to 30,000 US dollar per capita. We see this is a rising demand for copper intensive activities or products such as investment in infrastructure and electronics. The consumption then wanes until the replacement demand pushes it up again. Copper consumption reached the second peak at 40,000 to 50,000 GDP per capita. While the right hand side chart, China and India yet to reach even its first peak. Uh, China's copper consumption stood at the nine kilograms per capita in 2017, and then expected to the reach uh, over the one ten thousand kilogram per capita after 2027. And then India per capita consumption is only mere 0.5 kilograms in 2017. So these countries will support future growth of, of copper demands. And thanks to its spoke electric study, electrical conductivity, and the lack of price competitive substitutes, copper will be the key metal wherever electricity is used. 
power utilities and then electrical products together accounts for more than 72% of copper consumption globally. Demand for copper will brighten uh, with the electrification of energy demand, which we expect to outstrip the growth of total primary energy demands going forward. So uh, this will lead to strong demand growth of copper. Uh, while the advancement in the electronic payment could threaten the coin East demands, coin and the ammunition was responsible for the 10% of copper demand. So uh, global copper demand has grown 2.5% annually since, 2000, uh, since 1970s, and then registered 3% growth during 2010 to 2018, and expected to register 2.7% annually until 2022. So uh, here is a mega trend. <clears throat> so we actually have been discussed about the EV very much since yesterday. So I want to skip about the EV the projection. This is actually our DBS the projection. So our auto analysts think that the China DB, uh, China EV will reach it to the 12 12 to uh, 14 to 14.5 million units registering by registering annual growth 22 percent. So uh, actually last year uh, EV sales in China jumped to 62 percent to 1.3 million vehicle and then this year is expected to the 1.6 million uh, units. Uh, and uh, this is a key chart for our <coughs> forecast <clears throat> because the EV uses electric motors powered by batteries or fuel cell and they require more copper to manufacture manufacture than the conventional uh, international combustion engine vehicle. So according to ICA, uh, EV takes 38 kilograms of copper to make one EV battery EV, uh, EV and the 40 kilograms to make one uh, hybrid EV which is four and two times respectively uh, what is required for the combustion engine vehicle. So um, also we are actually discuss about the charging station. So I checked the numbers. So each charging station actually added eight kilograms copper demands. So this also bring the more copper demands going forward. So based on the, our uh, EV forecast, we actually project how much the copper demand will be generating from the EV. So as the result, um, uh, currently the <coughs> copper consumption from EV is only um, 200,000 kilo, uh, thousand tons, which is only 0, 1% of global total demand, but it will rise to the uh, 1.9 million tons in 2013 which is 8% of 2017's uh, global copper consumption. So uh, for the, in the near term, for the next five years, copper demand from EV will register strongest growth of 29% annually. And in 2022, copper uses in EV should contribute to 2.3% of, of total copper demands. Uh, also, we expect copper consumption growth associated with the infrastructure uh, will grow strongly. Also, the copper is a key matter in the renewable energy. Uh, the wind power consumes 10 kilograms copper per kilowatt, uh, and the solar uses 5 kilograms versus 3 kilograms uses in the nuclear power generation. So based on the IEA forecast, uh, the annual net uh, capacity addition for renewable energy uh, will, uh, will be the 74 watt for solar and then 50 gigawatt for the wind, uh, which is actually generated 600,000 600, tons of copper demand and then translate to the 3% global copper consumption in 2017. So this is a, a final um, the estimates for copper demand. Um, in 2019, we expect the copper demand growth to grow. Copper demand growth will be 2.3%. Uh, we expect the demand in uh, copper demand in China continue to grow by 3% despite concern on economic slowdown. 
And then accordingly, we expect Asia copper demands to register 3% intact growth and then uh, 2.9 annual consumption growth by 2022. We also expect India, ASEAN, Latin America will accelerate copper consumption growth along with uh, their economic development over the mid to long term uh, time horizon. Although their current contribution to the copper consumption is yet significant. Uh, so now let's move to the supply side. Uh, this is a, a recent supply distribution. So <clears throat> uh, according to the uh, according to the ICGS, copper mine capacity has declined 0 0.7, 0.3 percent in 2018, and then expect to increase only 0.5 percent in 2019. In particular, Las Bambas mine in Peru suffered road blockage by community protests this year for all about over the months. And also, Kodako in Chile uh, temporarily suspended operation at uh, its mine during the heavy, heavy rains. So, uh, mined copper in Chile is uh, decreased 5% in first quarter. So, this is uh, treatment charges for the copper. Uh, actually, the benchmark uh, treatment charges uh, has been agreed at $81, uh, which is 2% uh, lower than the 2017. And they also spot uh, the kind of copper thesis in China has declined 72% YTD. Uh, so this is a represent, represent tight copper concentrate market condition. So, uh, uh, especially the significant drop in copper production will be from the Grassberg mine in Indonesia due to the mine transition from open pit to the underground. Uh, concurrently, some copper companies has also cut their production guideline for 2019. Uh, Glencore rolled 3% and then MMG rolled 14% due to the safety issues. And then also I already explained about the conflict with the local community. Oh, sorry. Uh, also, the, uh, uh, we think that the mining supply faces several risks over the long term. Uh, as many of the world's larger copper mines age amid the lack of new discoveries, uh, copper contents in ore has been dec decreasing. Uh, secondly, the cost of production is rising. According to Kochilko, net cash cost of mine in 2017 was about the three times than the in 2000 to the 210 uh, cents per uh, pound in 2017. The major reason for this rising cost were the surging cost of labor, other consumable goods, and the depreciation. Especially the high depreciation cost stems from increase of capex intensity of mines. Over the last 10 years, capex intensity has almost doubled. Uh, and then also new discovery of copper deposit has been picked across all the region. 16 uh, out of the world's 20 biggest uh, copper mine were discovered and they began production before 21st centuries. Uh, with ore grade falling at the existing mine, the lack of a new project hints that the steeper cost curve going forward and then poses a risk to further growth of production. Uh, also, the recent developed mine is uh, mostly is located in the Latin America and Africa, uh, where political and social stability is weaker than other reasons. Uh, also, lack of social infrastructure uh, would raise the production cost higher and uh, lower supply consistency and visibility. So in the past year, 2017-2018, there were there is only one addition to the list of global top 20 copper mine, Kamato mine in Congo. And then in 2019, there is only one mining project planned in Panama uh, with a starting capacity of 150,000 tons. So uh, this is our projection for the mine. Uh, mined copper product production. We expect global mining capacity increase 
uh, at around 2% CAGR by 2022. Uh, and then also copper production growth is expected to be 2.5% annually uh, at the, for the same period. Uh, this is actually lower than 3.2% growth over 2010 to 2018 uh, growth. Uh, while the, uh, so uh, the, we have many distribution uh, issues in this year, so we downgrade our gross forecast for 2019 mined copper from 2% previously to 1% year on year. Uh, this, um, and then for this is a uh, mined copper, the next is a uh, uh, defined copper uh, supply gross uh, outlook. Uh, I believe some of audience already know about this uh, flow chart, how we make the copper. Uh, actually, the secondary production from scrap only account for 18% of global total refined copper. And then also the refined copper production through the SXEW method account for around 15%. So most of copper actually made through the electro electric method, which uses copper concentrate. So basically the copper concentrate is a major uh, determinant for su copper supply for even refined copper. Uh, so this chart is uh, uh, the structure between mined copper and the refined copper globally. So for, for mined copper, Chile is the largest supplier accounting for 27%, while China contributed 38% for the refined copper. So China will maintain its dominant position for the refined copper. However, its dependency for the imported concentrate are likely to increase uh, following capacity growth in smelting and refinery and the stricter copper scrap imports. Uh, in fact, the refined copper capacity hasn't been issued for copper supply. Uh, it has been abundant and then continue to grow um, with the new uh, development, new mine development. Um, it is estimated that China added 1.3 million copper smelting capacity in 2018 and 2019, uh, including 400,000 facility newly commissioned by uh, Chinalco. And uh, however, the increase in the capacity is expected to slow down coming, coming years affected by stricter environmental regulation in China. Uh, however, um, uh, the total uh, from the 2000, during 2018-2022, China is expected to added about 2.25 million tons of smelting capacity. Uh, so still, uh, the smelting capacity growth is uh, uh, strong in China. Uh, despite increases in the smelting capacity, China refined production volume in 2018 was limited to only 1.6%, uh, as I already explained that, because of the copper scrap the import regulation. Actually, the copper scrap import, import declined 27%, and the wine refined copper imports rose 26%. So uh, limited scrap avail availability should weigh on the China refined copper production going forward. Uh, for the, over the long term, uh, I think the, probably China have uh, more availability their own scrap. So this will pushes, um, pushes the more production growth in China. While the refinery utilization has been fluctuated with the copper prices, uh, the lowest was happened in 2019 at 77%. Uh, uh, that, that is affected from the financial global financial crisis. And the, along with the recovery in copper prices, utilization ratio has recovered. And then we expect it will be sustained around, at around 85%. Mm, and then we understand that refinery utilization in line with the benchmark TC, uh, as higher TC implies better margins for reply, for refineries. Uh, so this is a refined copper supply projection. We expect a 2.8% annual growth for the uh, during over 2018-2022. 
This is a lower density 0.1% growth uh, in the refinery capacity, um, uh, which is mainly due to tepid growth of the mined copper. While this is a slightly higher than demand growth forecast of 2.7% over the same period, uh, but we believe it's uh, still insufficient to meet uh, demand. So uh, now we are uh, final final stage for the conclusion of the uh, uh, my presentation. So this is a summary of today's uh, presentation. Uh, I think uh, it's better to skip uh, this uh, this one. I just to leave it uh, you to read. And the most important part, most uh, the conclusion part is a copper market and the price outlook. So we expect that copper price continue to remain at the deficit. The deficit volume was eight, 387,000 ton, ton in 2018. And in, in, in 2019, it will be the 323,000, uh, still the deficit, but the deficit will, de will decline. With the demand growth accelerating from 2020, we expect the copper market deficit to widen. So we expect the LME copper price to average uh, at uh, $6,500 $6, per ton in 2019, similar to the 2018. Um, but uh, based on the strong fundamentals, copper prices is forecast to average higher year on year, finally headed to towards to the a seven thousand per uh, US dollars ton level. Now, thank you for listening to my presentation, and then uh, this is all about me. <laughs>